So today I have five new hobby tools for you to try in 2023. Okay, what did I test in this video? This is Muso Black. It should be the blackest black of them all and I've filled them into this dropper thingy. Also, we have alcoholic metallic paints from Vallejo. They are absolutely amazing. I adore the golden high flow transparent paints. They are amazing. Acrylic paint, by the way. Yeah, you've seen a lot of videos on the verdigris and rust and moss um, from Dirty Down. Also testing these. Should be in your arsenal. We call this rust. This is rust. And of course, we are going to take a look at my two favorite whites. They are basically the same, but not. And it's Schminke, Artist Grade and uh, Academy Grade. Hope you enjoy this. Okay, so why do I have Schminke in two versions, which is basically the same color? This one, the artist one, is thicker, so I use it mostly for mixing, and this one is a bit thinner, and I use it mainly for dry brushing. Why do I use this one for dry brushing? Because it doesn't look that chalky when you do it. Dry brushing in white could look a bit chalky. Yes, I use the good technique with the um, moist brush, but this stuff looks way better on the Mini than the Artist range. This Mini is primed in a dark blue and then Zenith is sprayed with a lighter blue. And now I'm dry brushing on it, so I'm basically making a colored slap chop. And yes, that works and it works really well. I think the Academy White works much better for dry brushing. Also use a slightly moist brush and if you're rubbing the paint off, do it on a cardboard or wood. Don't use anything that absorbs moisture like a paper towel. If I want real coverage, I use the Artist Grade. This is perfect for the trim and for the headband and everything where I want some really crisp white without using a lot of coats. And this stuff works over everything. Black, metallic, you name it, it works. I really like the alcoholic metallics. They are a bit tricky to handle because they are really runny. You maybe need a second coat, but that's all right. Tricky part is you need isopropanol to clean off your brush. The good thing is you can clean parts of the model where you accidentally applied this paint. Just take a clean brush, dip it in a bit of isopropanol and remove it. It works even like 20 minutes, 30 minutes later. And that's the kind of metallic I can already work with. Since this stuff is so runny, you really need to watch out for three things. First of all, you may need a second coat. Second of all, loading your brush, the paint can really easily get up to your ferrule. And third, you don't want it to run everywhere on your miniature. Of course you can clean it up, but it's running everywhere. Watch out for that. I've tried the copper, old gold, gold and silver. And the best behaving one is the silver. It covers mostly in one coat, it isn't that runny and it has an amazing shine to it. Sadly, I've forgotten where I've heard this tip, but old gold is the perfect highlight color for copper. If you have a raised area or even a used area, like the tip of a shoe or a buckle, this color works really well together with the copper. But yeah, actually the best part, they are so freaking shiny. I have no other paint that is so shiny like these alcoholics. Okay, the Muso Black is not my daily driver black. It is quite nice looking at the effect. You can see it on the bases, you can see it on some parts of the miniature, but it's, in my opinion, too dark for the most things that you would paint. But I'm willing to try out more stuff with this color, especially on more chaotic models. I can imagine this has its fair use. But as you can see here, it really works well over metallics. Okay, everybody's doing that slap chop stuff and you can use it for this. And it's absolutely looking fine. Um, you don't get those super dark recesses. You need to make them yourself before you apply this but everything else just shines through. And the amazing, amazing part of these is tinting metals. It works really well and you can make your copper or your gold a bit greenish with them. It works absolutely fine. And this is stuff just made for glazing. 
And now we're going into slab chop territory. I mean, look at this. I could use contrast paint for this, but actually this golden high flow transparent acrylics are so nice in running into all the recesses and crevices. Look how easy it is to darken down the recesses on the trousers. This stuff is just amazing. It's made for glazing and stuff like this. Using the grey black on all the hair and all the weapons makes it look like they are standing in a blue light and all the edges and all the hair is reflecting the blue light. And I decided the coats need to be a darker, more saturated blue. So I just painted them over with the golden high flow and look how nice it picks up all the shading, all the dry brushing, all the volumes are still there. And it's a full coat. This is amazing. I freaking love golden high flow acrylics. The same goes for the faces and the skull. Yeah, you need two or three coats to really get it down, but you still can see all the nice raised areas, all the dry brushing, it is still there. In the end, I decided to mix around some of the browns to get a tonal variation, but it's easy as pie. This is like contrast paints, but a bit lighter. Sadly, the lenses and visors don't look as nice on video as they look in real life. I just painted in a white highlight and they look freaking awesome. If there's any stuff that I wouldn't want to mess in my arsenal anymore, it's the rust from Dirty Down. Yes, the moss effect is cool and the verdigris is kind of cool too, but the rust applied in multiple layers is just amazing. This is the best rust effect I've ever used and I've tried a lot of them. Throwing around the rust effect in the miniature is easy enough. It will make a decent rust effect all on its own, but these are the laziest, still most interesting bases I've ever done. You just put on the rust on a black base into three or four layers and it will build up in an amazing rust effect. Then you go in and you take the moss effect and you cover all the areas that are not covered in rust. Make some overlap and then cover their feet in that moss effect. So it will look like they are on a really, really old, really, really dirty spaceship and walking through all that muck and all that grime. Also the verdigris is pretty self-explanatory. You just put it on where you want it and it will build up. And since the metallic colors are so nice, you get some really cool verdigris effect. It will run into all the crevices and do the work on its own, basically. This is a hobby channel and it's a small channel, but there are already people supporting me and I want to thank you for doing that. You can support me with my Patreon. You can support me with buying merch. And all the support that goes into this channel ends up in products like these so i can test it out and show them to you all right if you like this video so far please leave a like a comment or a subscribe and now just let's take a look at them Well, yes, it was Warhammer again, it was Kill Team again, and it was speed painting again. Um, that's kind of the theme of the channel at the moment. But people asked me or answered me in my survey what they want to see, and I am reacting to this now. So there will be more non-Warhammer content on this channel, more painting, uh, maybe some 3D printing, and I will try to add in some mental health stuff because I do a lot of mental health stuff in my work and in my free time and people want to know about that stuff so I will deliver. But for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon here on The Bear and the Brush. Bye guys.